Now let's focus on Ethiopia, a country in East Africa with a population of around 120 million people. They recently marked one year since the end of a civil war, which took place between the military and local militias. The Ethiopian forces are led by President Abiy Ahmed, while the local militias were located in Ethiopia's northern Tigray region. Although the war officially ended last year, Ethiopia has not experienced a peaceful year since then, as another conflict emerged. In fact, this conflict is still ongoing, this time in the country's Amara region, between Abiy Ahmed's forces and local militias. Additionally, severe floods have devastated the other side of the country, resulting in the deaths of at least 20 people and the displacement of thousands. Describing the situation as chaotic would be an understatement. Instead, let us ask you a question. What would you do if your country constantly faced turmoil? Whatever your answer may be, it likely wouldn't align with the actions of the president. Abiy Ahmed is a Nobel laureate, having won the Nobel Peace Prize. However, in the past few years, he has led three wars and now appears to be hinting at a fourth one. He has been stirring up tensions, particularly with Ethiopia's neighboring countries, starting with his statements about the Red Sea. Abiy Ahmed desires access to the Red Sea, which poses a problem because Ethiopia is a landlocked country and one of the most populous landlocked nations globally. He believes that this geographical constraint is hurting the country's economy. So what's his proposed solution? It appears he wants to acquire a port from a neighboring country. While he hasn't openly threatened anyone, Ahmed suggests striking a deal, offering valuable Ethiopian assets in exchange for a port. Moreover, he doesn't seem willing to accept a negative response. In recent weeks, he has publicly spoken about obtaining a port, addressing the issue in televised speeches and discussions with business leaders. Reports suggest that he even mentioned the possibility of using military force if necessary, although he denies making such statements publicly. He claims to not want another war, but his rhetoric seems to suggest otherwise. Let us quote a statement he made. The lack of port access was a potential source of future conflict. It certainly sounds like a threat, and all of Ethiopia's seafaring neighbors perceive it as such. Among these neighbors, Eritrea is particularly alarmed. Eritrea was a part of Ethiopia approximately 30 years ago and gained independence in 1993. The two countries have a history of bloody conflict, which came to an end a few months after Abiy Ahmed assumed power. The irony is hard to ignore. Ahmed received the Nobel Peace Prize in 2019 for resolving the border conflict with Eritrea. Now he is pressuring the same country for port access and hinting at conflict if his request is denied. Eritrea has deemed Ahmed's request excessive and perplexing, according to their statement. However, Ahmed argues that access should be provided based on historical, geographical, ethnic, and economic factors. He claims that Ethiopia's past control of the entire Horn of Africa region supports the historical argument. He also mentioned people-to-people -people ties. Yet, the main focus of his argument seems to be economic. Ahmed asserts that no country can achieve rapid progress without access to maritime trade. He cites UN studies that highlight the negative impact of lacking sea access, which reduces a nation's GDP by 20%. Currently, Ethiopia relies on its neighbor Djibouti for sea access incurring a significant annual cost of over a billion dollars. President Abiy Ahmed believes this situation is unsustainable, hence his push for a port in his own country. There is some merit to the economic arguments, but if we consider economics, Ahmed seems to be disregarding a cardinal rule. War is detrimental to business. He should understand this better than most, given that his presidency has been marked by wars. Two wars have already taken place, and a third conflict is ongoing. Thousands of lives have been lost, and the country is exhausted from war. Despite these challenges, what does he plan to do? He intends to escalate tensions over a port. This raises the question, when is the appropriate time to revoke a Nobel Peace Prize? For Abiy Ahmed, many believe it should have happened years ago.